Right. Oh, we have. We've done it. Technical problems like you would not believe for me. But fortunately, we do have a crew behind us and they kind of set it all up and they grab things and they press buttons and they did it all and stuff. So, um, another Dark City show. And if you do want to get on to us, please do. Remember when you come into the main chat room on Skype or on your telephone, keep your background noise down for us. If we do get a lot of background noise, we'll have to drop you from the call because obviously it goes out live on air. We are actually live. That's why we... And we're not really professionals. We're all amateurs. We're here because of the love of it. <laughs> so bear with us. Bear with us. And we are running on experimental... Um, servers with um, new software, new things what haven't been done. So we are going to have, have a few itches. Uh, we do have a backup server, but not everybody's got access to it yet because it's not quite ready. Um, but hey, it's all part of the fun. It's all part of the fun. <sighs> right, so if you do want to ring in, um, then you can do. And that number uh, worldwide is plus 44. 161 298 0298 uh, and if you're in the UK you can drop the plus 44 and you use a 0 161 298 0298 uh, if you've got Skype and you're on the, the internet I hope you've heard of it because you're listening to us because this is what we are uh, we are the voice of the internet or at least the free section of the internet, not controlled by the corporate media organisations and the scum filth. Uh, oh, getting carried away again. Excuse me, can't let all out. Not just yet. Anyway, um, so yeah, Skype. You can Skype us, call us. Please do. It's fun. It's like a big family affair. The Dark City Show. You know, it does get a bit heated um, sometimes. But hey, mute your microphone. You know, shout at your monitor, unmute your microphone, and let's get into some uh, good, good conversation. And a good conversation begins with an introduction. So, uh, who have we got with us? We've got Kajner and Kajner. We've got Kum, 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 Kali and Prajner. <laughs> As always, Kali uh, is, is there being delectable and delightful. And Prajner's um, sat there clicking buttons or not clicking buttons or telling me he hasn't clicked buttons when he kind of caught a button and then getting me to panic. <laughs> well, that's all good. And that's where we were moments before we started. Uh, but you can't do it without one another we can't, you know, we can't put all this together um, we just can't and it's a massive uh, learning curve from us all <coughs> excuse me <coughs> so, who else, we've got Dawn with us Dawn of the Dark City and a di diorama on a Sunday night, look at that straight out of my memory because I've not got all my web pages up yet Sudama has also been producing for us tonight and who actually just saved our bacon, I do believe. Uh, and as did Prajna. <laughs> and we all got bumped off. Uh, Stop the Rocks joined us, that's pretty cool. Um, there is a couple more of you out there. I know I caught you and I brought you in, but there are more, so please send me the messages, I'll get you in. Um, I did actually have to reboot, so. We've got our Dark City Linux server with us this evening as well in the room. And it's trusty colleague Robo Hippie. Uh, he's with us. And uh, we've got Mark Mann on the telephone now. He's over near the airport. We'll get to Mark Mann shortly. And uh, we have Trace. Uh, Trace, who's been on with us before, I think. No, no, he hasn't. He's never been on with that seat, I don't think. We've had a couple of chats before. Um, so, yeah, Trace is pretty well informed. Um, and has uh, got her, uh, her own um, stories to tell, I suppose. I suppose that's what we call them. Uh, metaphysiology. The study of life through one's own perception. Hmm. <laughs> Who else have I got here now who to bring in? Uh, ring, ring. I think that's Bob. We'll get Bob added to it. So if you do want to get in our big group, please. There's no real topic. It's an open topic. Um, we'll just see what um, what happens. If you do get in the call and you do want to say something, yeah, stick a number in the room. Just stick a number in the bottom of the room. Uh, otherwise, it can become a bit of a free-for-all because we don't know who wants to take the microphone next. So we have to create some sense of order. But it's only a sense of order. I mean, it could go chaotic at any moment. Right, then. Uh, what are we doing the show about tonight? Has anybody got the rem remotest of ideas? Please message me if you want to get in. I've just got a message there to add Jabba and Craig. Oh, 
Now, we've just been joined by Craig on the show. That's absolutely wonderful. Uh, he has a radio uh, show, or, uh, or uh, what do you call it? Hello. Uh, hi, Craig. Give us a minute. Well, come on, Craig. Say, oh, nice one, man. We just started the show. I was just inviting people in, and you're a newbie to our little radio. So, uh, yeah, introduce yourself, Craig, and uh, welcome to Dark City. Hello, Craig. Is it Craig? I can't see all his name. There's it is. Craig Houston. Oh, I think... I think Craig's mic might be muted because I, I sort of laid it on with a trowel to mute your mic when you come in because somebody will be speaking. <laughs> there we go. Sorry, guys. Ah, right. Craig. I had, I, had the, I had the radio player open as well, so I was getting all sorts of noises coming through. So I've got the radio player closed and my mic open now. Oh, it's a good thing to do, man. Thank <laughs> you very much indeed for that. I really do. Uh, so go on, introduce yourself, Craig, to the listeners. Um, I, I don't know if this is your, your first time on, um, on, on the radio. Um, I've seen some of your YouTube, your YouTube clips. Uh, Craig kind of flooded us with all these clips. Of, where's he come from? So I sent him a message. I actually said, why don't you come on the radio and tell us about it? Anyway, he's, uh, he's turned up now. So once again, Craig, and welcome to Dark City. Thanks for having us, man. Oh, you're so, welcome, bro. You're welcome. I don't, know, I don't know really what you say, man. Just um, probably started looking into stuff about two years ago. Um, <laughs> started on the usual crap and then it progressed and just basically I uh, looked into a wee bit of everything. So um, started a YouTube channel, seemed to get really good feed feedback. Uh, I don't know, you know yourself, the first time you actually put yourself out there on YouTube or whatever, it's <laughs> a nerve-wracking experience to say the least, so um, got a positive response, so the confidence grew from there, and as I learnt more and uh, wanted to share what I was learning more, uh, I just started doing more YouTube videos, and it seems to be that quite a lot of people appreciate them right now, but I uh, don't know, like it's, uh, it's, it's definitely fun to do. And very enlightening at the same time. Oh, I've uh, I've got to agree with you. Um, I um, I kind of, kind of, I kind of, kind of, I kind of, kind of fell into it all. Uh, I walked into it all. Or, you know, um, we had our own little action uh, here, just in Ashton Underline, when we went one day and after giving them prior notice of intention, actually went on and started to cultivate this piece of land. And uh, it's it's gone from one extreme to the other. It really has. Uh, I, so I was kind of thrust into uh, whatever we call it. I can't call it the truth movement anymore, me, Craig. It don't seem to go anywhere, and, and it, it don't seem to have a lot of truth in it. Uh, so I, I've got to come up with another name. I think it, it, when I say it, and I've, well, it just seems. Well, I don't think it's people that are awake or asleep. It's more that where people are wanting to be aware because nobody's got the real truth. Everybody's got their own sort of a version of the truth and uh, a lot of people concentrate in different fields as well, so there's there's not one definitive, definitive truth out there, I don't think. No, I've got to agree with you, all heartedly. We all, I mean, even if it, there is, even if there is, right, if there is one truth, then we all perceive it uniquely. So, you know, whichever way we're going to take that, Craig, you know, we are, we're going to have, we're going to have a lot of... Uh, you know, a lot of angles, aren't we, at the best, the best of it. But what gets us is, or what gets me, and, and a lot of the crew on Dark City, is the source of this so-called truth, or, uh, you know, regardless of who it is, where we're coming from. You know, where, where, where does this, the media stream is a prime example. Um, I mean, I know you covered yourself on, on the, uh, what was it, is it Boston, the Boston bombing. Boston <laughs> bombing, I mean, it's like, but, uh, to me, it all went on. It all went on, didn't it? It's another one again. It's like, wow, check that out. And how quick that information gets out there. And how I, I, I fast, for me anyway, um, that those stories were just kind of crushed, really. I mean, really were. It's like, okay, there it is. There you go. You can have a bit of attention. Forget it. You know, we're not duped as quick as we were. Um, well, when the Boston bombing happened, the first thing I said was, Everybody look elsewhere and see what's happening. <laughs> you just need to look what happened at 9-11. One of the secretaries of an MP got caught on an email 
saying it's a good day to bury bad news. That's the mentality of these people. So when the boss and bombing goes off, you can guarantee something else is going off elsewhere. And right enough, they were putting what, 200 troops at the time in the Jordan border. Uh, I think it was like literally the day after the Boston bombing, Hegel came out and announced the 200 troops next to the Jordan border. So <clears throat> the other thing as well, see all those fake photographs and stuff. <clears throat> Some of them are very convincing, but a lot of Photoshop is. And it's a smoke screen. It's just to drag. I think it's just a, a, a smoke screen to just drag people's attention away uh, for what's going on elsewhere, concentrating all the... Is it fake? Look at his leg, so on and so forth. And like, it's important to look at the pictures, obviously. But I think spend most of your time actually looking at the uh, the real meat of the pudding. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Lots, for me. A lot of the alternative media has become just to dissect the mainstream media uh, and point a finger at it and, and chop it apart. So I, I totally agree with you. It, it is a, it's a redirection, isn't it? They're pulling this focus away uh, from real issues perhaps we could do something about and focusing on things which have happened in the past tense we can't really do anything about I mean you don't ever see anything on the media you know before it happens you know they don't come in and say oh well this is terrible well, what's going to happen here they always come in after the event uh, I, I've had interactions with the major media uh, what do you call them the conglomerates the IT the BBC mainly <laughs> but others uh, and they come after the event, um, and they're only interested if it's sensational. Yeah. I think the second and the third time they came, um, I think it was the third time, and they came, and we were like, look, we're sick of working for you for free. And uh, the guy went and bought, sent our mate Stevie to get some drinks, and he came back with one bottle of wine, costed £19.99, pence, and spent the entire £20, I uh, got one bottle of wine, and then we all promptly said, right, we'll see you in a bit. We're going playing with a megaphone on the street. Uh, and we left them there. Uh, we came back about three hours later to left. They were all stood around waiting for us. And I think we have to remember that they are to serve us, not us to serve them. Um, we'd learned then already that when they do take information and they put it out, they change the name of the group. Uh, we were asked an allotment action uh, because that's what we are. We're an action group. And they changed us to the A team of Gorilla Gardeners. Now I ask you, if you go and search for Gorilla Gardeners, you're not got A you're not gonna get Aston Allotment Action. And they're quite well aware of that. So yeah, um it's kind of a lot to do with why we're here and what we're doing. Uh, how did that city show uh, originally started off? Because um we we, we got no reaction from six point one million viewers. I mean, we didn't even get a crack smoking piss drinker telling us we were full of shit, Craig. <laughs> I, I can believe that, that's for sure. That was the funniest shit as well, wasn't it? He was so funny, wasn't it? The crack smoking piss drinker? <laughs> yeah. I think that's one of the finest bits of, of artistic performance that, that the internet has ever come across, to be honest. Just, you didn't hear the first half. I only hit the recorder in the, the second half. The first half was, was absolutely hilarious. I actually, I actually, I, I actually had to walk away and, and, and crouch on my hands and knees on my kitchen floor and hold my stomach. Uh, if you haven't come across it, Craig, or the viewers haven't come across um, Crack Smoking Piss Drinker, I, I, I implore you to go and listen to it. And if your children um, may be dabbling, dabbling in, in Class A drugs, I mean drugs, um, not not um, herbs and some description, you know, but, but drugs. Yeah. Uh, let them listen to crack smoking piss drinker. I'm telling you. You say, look, this is what happens after 20 grand. After you spend 20,000 euros, that's what your consciousness is going to be like. I, I nearly didn't put it up. Um, stop the rock. I nearly didn't put it up, mate. Uh, I didn't. And it was a friend of mine who actually said, put it up. Put it up. He said, that'll put kids off crack and of smoking crack and drinking their own urine forever. Oh, well, that can't be a bad thing. And sure enough, uh, I, we have had some real positive response over that that video. That, and I do hope the guy concerned actually hears it. I really do. Um, because he's obviously a really kind-hearted man. Uh, he really is. He does want to get out there. He has got, obviously, quite a lot of issues. 
Uh, and, and the art goes out to him, it really does. And the guy's a, a, a struggling addict, obviously a struggling addict. Um, and normally, <coughs> like I say, that's why I didn't, I didn't put it out there. But it was his wish that it, his, his, his words um, may assist others. They may assist others. Uh, so yeah, it's a bit, it was a bit of a tricky one for me, that, really, I must be honest. It was a little bit of a tricky one. You can tell the number of times I got, erm, 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 when I'm, I'm speaking, um, when, it's, when it's time. I think, actually, Paul, it was pretty difficult for all of us. It was a total shock, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, originally, he actually came on with, and like, it's like you say, do we vet things? Well, you've got to kind of, to a certain degree, and we don't want to take advantage out of people who are having difficulty. I certainly don't. Anyway, last thing I want to do, uh, you know, is promote a victim. That's, I'll point it out. I'll point it out, but you know, the, 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 that's not what I'm about, and I know everybody around me knows that it, it's not. Um, it isn't. But the guy what? actually started, Bob, by telling us he had got a cure. He had actually got a yeah, cure yeah. for for, and he, he was in this. And then he reveals that he's actually smoking crack on the show. I was gobsmacked. He's like, what? And and. and once the penny dropped, um, that was it. It was like, right, I'm gone. This is, this is, this is, it's got to stop, you know. Yeah, it was quite a, quite, it, he didn't do that till right at the end, though, did he? And no. I have listened to it again, and you can hear him tooting on the bike. Uh, yeah, we did. That's what drew us suspicions. Um, and, that, and Dom, uh, Dom asked him directly. You know, are you smoking crack now? And he's like, yeah. And I did yeah, before I came on the show. Before it started. <laughs> and yeah. I had another one halfway drinking, through. Drinking piss is obviously the cure then, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well... So, the conclusion we came to was um, smoking crack cures you of pissing. Yeah. Yeah, he isn't, he isn't actually, we don't know if he's cured, we don't know if his interaction with us actually cured him of smoking crack. We, we don't know that. But, but, from his own words, it did cure him of drinking piss. It did. <laughs> it's a small victory, but it's a victory nonetheless. Well, I, I like to, to kind of go on the, the glass is half full, rather than half empty. <laughs> and so, yeah, uh, it is a very, very, very small victory, isn't it? I don't know if we can trust that as a victory. Hey, hey Paul. Paul, can I jump Hi, in? Hi, Tris. Here? Yes, get in, Tris. Welcome. Introduce yourself, Tris. Well, it it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I just want to jump in based on what you said, not because I have to talk. I'm feeling compassion for dude with the piss, drinking the piss, and I'm a little upset about my My vote would have been to not post it because... Uh, they, the system, does a lot of that, and it brings down the frequency, especially for those of us that are empaths that see the tragedy, that what's really happening there, there is that body, the spirit isn't even in there, is it, Paul? It's been taken over by um, some other entity that would drink its own pee. That's what I feel, that it's very, very tragic to see somebody, because of the government that brought all that synthetic drugs and, you know, into the countries and let it loose on the streets to people that but had their Trish, spiritual you're very rough, you're very knowing muffled. taken away. Can you move off your mic? Oh, back am I? Back? Just slightly, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's yeah, it. I had slid yeah. down on my head, sorry. That's I it. have a little head. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm right. But anyways, I'm also... I, I'm also probably... I, I was just like, I did go into a really low frequency because I was... I wasn't with you there, brother, kind of having the the giggle, really, i got to say. Ah, uh, well, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was funny until we realised, like I say, it comes as a shock to all of us, it was funny until we actually knew what was happening, you know? Because what guys like that serve is to introduce us to our humanity. Why is that even going on, eh? Well, the, the major... Bob, is that you? Ah, oh, thank you. Um, look, the, the, what, what you may not know is that he actually asked us to to put it up. 
the money question has to split off. Yeah, I was I was gleaning that too. Yeah, yeah, I I get that. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess I just decided to speak for him because I was feeling him. Mm. I was feeling oh, him, yeah, and, sure. and uh, while while you guys were sharing it, because I'm visual as well, um, so I'm I'm visualizing this. Plus, I've been close to and know other other beings who've been inflicted in such a way where you know one of my friends was you know arrested not too long ago you know chronic you know crack problem amazing talent as well but i mean he just you know he was humping a meter in, in victoria bc you know in full daylight <laughs> like he was just completely out of his mind and uh, i'm glad nobody caught that on camera you know, nobody would ever buy another painting when he gets into a, uh, a, another heart zone, when he starts loving himself again, instead of surrendering his container to whatever fucked up entity wants to take it over and start behaving that way. And I, I, I feel that this is what really happens to us when we're, you know, when we're not, you know, we don't have our soul and spirit and mind and body all connected, that, and we're really weak. Like a lot of people have been dropped on their head right. when they were an infant. What chance? Do, what chance do they have? They're working yeah. through it. So we can either totally help them or th push them over. Totally agree with you. Uh, I mean, I've seen a couple more videos today. Um, but uh, before I get to them videos, let me get this in. Um, for me, there's a lot of shit here. Proper, dirty, grimy energy. Um, which has been created by us, either individually or collectively. Well, I, I'm going to deal with that. I'm going to take that shit, me, and I'm going to turn it into summer beautiful. Something beautiful. Maybe we have got a lost soul there. I don't dis dispute that. I, I don't. I don't do. And I've listened to it afterwards, and it's like, when you know what you're listening to is completely different than when you don't. And many people who know me know that often I use humour and comedy so I can actually get close to things that aren't normally spoke about or we don't want to bring to the forefront because they are tragic they really are so maybe he has lost completely I mean I don't think anything is truly lost completely but you know just for the benefits of this let's say he is but I heard I heard that that man speak I want to I want to help others if anything that I can do anything that I can say and stop others getting into this situation then Okay, but right now it's about you and me. Right now it's about you and me, not really about him. Right well, now, like right now, I'm I'm doing the same thing. I, I think we could take it to the next, the next level and say, really, what is this guy? What is this, you know, example of humanity gone wrong? Well, I've got a couple there of, to show us okay. all. I was gonna, that's all I'm saying. I've got a couple I was going to bring in. Um, I was going to bring into that. Like I said, I got a couple of videos, but I'm getting to them. Um, so yeah, have we got a guy there? Um, yeah, maybe he is. Uh, I saw another video today, which actually uh, I don't know if it stars you, Trace, whether you're filming, whether it's you in the uh, Trace, excuse me, in the in the video, or 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 whether you're filming it. I don't know. Um, I, I suspect it is you who's in in the actual video itself. And that was a, 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 a man. Oh, that's that's was, me. That. Sorry. That was a, a, a man, uh, basically, and he's he's living on a park bench. Uh, a little bench at the, at the side of a of a store, and the people are really concerned. It was it, it was it's quite a beautiful video, and you know I'm like, it's heavy. It's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. It's beautiful, but it's heavy because it, you know it's real. There are people out there. It was meant to be. No oh, right. That okay. was how I direct. That was how I directed it. Somebody started filming me looking after this guy, and I said, well. What are you doing? And and I said, then give me a microphone. And I decided to turn from the construction site to uh, where I was building him an A-frame to basically get some backing from the people on the street. So it was it was pretty spontaneous. You can see I didn't exactly do my hair, but it was uh, it turned out to be a powerful piece. And I do have to give the rest of the team credit. It's the first uh, film I made, but it was really somebody else had taken a try at it with footage that. Uh, was t was on hand and it wasn't my message so I got into the studio and it, it's powerful it says what I was saying like how hard can this be never mind advocating and trying to get the system who has an agenda to do the very opposite you know let's just do it ourselves if I a single mother with few resources can pull it in from the ethers because I'm coming from the heart then so can we all 
And so it wasn't a one-off. I mean, you know, this this was a resolve. A hundred square feet of heated private space for this guy who had been walking around in circles for ten years. And at the point that I met him, it was my path. So did I go looking for that? No. But I said, okay, what am I being asked to do here? And there was a 72-year-old man who was acting, you know, who was who was really like a scared little boy from his dementia, his injury, his his you know poverty, his wet brain. You know, I can label it any way I want. He was a beautiful soul. He's still with me. He's still in my heart. Yeah, I can say. And he 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 deserved he deserved it, and so does that guy on the street, and so does every one of our brothers and sisters. So we just have to turn to each other and help each other and not not worry about little me and what I'm getting out of it. And then that government that is just going to go away. You know, um it's about fear or love. We stand in fear or love. I'm I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm a I'm a clan mother. I must have a some kind of tribal um connection to to this earth and life itself because I've been very, very acutely up against the, the divine feminine principle that we're all merging into, you know, within ourselves. And I, and I say that because I believe nature is feminine and that the earth is a sentient being and it's our mother. Each of one of us is a cell, an organism, part of that organism. And that when we align biologically, you know, take our shoes off and stand in the soil and look at the sun and get away from all the man-made and all anything that's destructive we could say that's that's patriarchal but it's just it's just the other side of the duality i'm not qualifying it i'm just you know speaking from an energetic perspective if you zoom out as far as you can and you look at everything from its energy source is that based in fear is that based in love and i don't mean what you're seeing outside of yourself i mean who are you in relationship to what you're seeing outside yourself and that's where we heal this thing, is right there, taking responsibility for how we see what we're, what we're focusing our emotions on. And that's why I don't like that, because I'm an empath. If I see that on my Facebook, I'm going to feel that, and I just fed it. I just, I just looped it around one more time for us all to experience one more time, because we are creators. We bring it in when we connect our emotions to our visual, to, you know, any kind of projection. I, that's what... That's where I'm at, is we're, we're, we're creating it right now. Um, well, I, I'd, I'd call it manipulation, but I wouldn't call that. I don't think there is anything to be created here. Uh, I think there are many of us that I do have issues with, uh, with division, of one sort of another. Uh, and that as an individual you can bring yourself into harmony with the divisions that you were once in uh, but denying them well yeah you, you're going to find it difficult to be uh, emotionally grounded and stable in the situation like I say, I, I did feel him I got I, 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 whoa, 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 Tris, Tris my goal sorry, sorry, sorry okay, don't be sorry it's okay. I'm sorry, it's okay. See, see with the no, eyes of the eyes. No, no, if you if you are sorry, then then don't continue to do it. No, well that wouldn't be that would be as it, you know. Thank you. So yeah, um, I, I do see that there's a lot of us that have got issues with something, you know, and that often divides us on one sense or another. Um, I, and I wouldn't say that your way isn't right for you. Of course, your way is right for you, as mine is for me. And, and I would say as, as as, as I think it was Craig earlier on, there, there are many, many, many different ways of seeing it. Um, many, even if it is the same thing we're all experiencing. So How about if it's the love way or oh, the fear no, way? No, 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 no. Okay, just, just let me finish. Thank you. So it brought me, this brings me to the third video, or, 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 or the second video that I saw today. And this is also to do with, with a homeless man. And if I remember, my memory serves me right. Uh, maybe one of the crew can help me with this. It was called uh, Anonymous Makes Homeless Man Cry. Um, worth typing in and having a look at. It is a spontaneous event. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, it really is. Uh, it, it, it had me teetering on the edge, I'll tell you. Mind you, that's not big. I teeter on the edge a lot. I'm one of them blokes who can cry, you know. But it did. It was really, really touched me. 
And now when I put those two videos together, um, you can see the beginning and the end. You can see the beginning and the end. It's, it's phenomenal. It really is. And, really? And, and, and people actually there on the street, most of them young people, and the power of them was to just turn the situation into why, why you people walking past, don't walk past this man. This man has been put here because of the government, basically. Bang! That was anonymous. I'm pretty sure it was called uh, Anonymous Makes, uh, makes Homeless Men Cry. So yeah, amazing piece of uh, amazing little piece of video. Well, now, can I just show? I'm, okay, yep. No, go on, go on. Please. I just wanted to share something about the the word homeless because we went from from that was the train we took there homeless. But I actually don't use the word because it was a byproduct of the housing industry, and uh, you know it was created by the system homelessness. So anyway, I, so I don't like to say homeless man. I, I try not to say that. I don't know. I'm so hypersensitive. I apologize. No, no, it's um, it, 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 there's no need to apologize. It's no people. No, it's, it's what it's about. People are expressing themselves. <laughs> well, it's about the dignity. Yeah, it's about the dignity of the situation. I just got so so close to it. How do you describe somebody without a home then? without shelter shelterless because just because they usurp the word and they call it homelessness and they they put it in our face and on the papers and desensitized the people and got them used to seeing people in that condition so we just looked the other way instead of just turning and saying hey we got like we had we had one guy that age in our community of 10,000 rich people you know uh there was no reason for it so just nobody was just doing it so anyway, I just because I busted it and, and realized when they did it and how, you know, what a strategy it was, uh, you know, because I'm really kind of all about the law. It just, it, it just, I want to differentiate legal and law and homelessness, which is a byproduct of the housing industry that was created here in Canada, you know, deliberately. So um, what happened was when Lauren went out there, instead of the system creating a, a space that was effective for him considering his condition uh, they, they made all that money off of every year that he was out there like fifty to eighty thousand Canadian dollars a year was generated into the system just by him going to jail in the hospital several times a week uh, which was created because he had absolutely nowhere to go other than something that was insulting to his dignity and so why a lot of people out there would rather say no, you know, to a facility because there's no dignity. There's more than, you know, shelter, food, and warmth when somebody's telling you what to do. So, uh, so yeah, it was, it was a one-off here, but it, it could be duplicated. And the, the point was is that halfway through, I completely uh, stopped dealing with the system and not caring about the system and not complying. And I used Lauren's practical needs and tactical strategies to uh, not comply but not get it, you know, uh, uh, derailed. And uh, I was determined to uh, show the world, for that matter, that nobody need be walking around labeled homeless, that it wasn't about money. It was about an agenda to desensitize you so you'll just look the other way and say it's somebody else's job. No, I totally agree so I with um, the, what you're saying about words and, and the spells they contain. However, yeah. um, and, and I, th I think when you realize that and you can see how words are constructed so that the spell is reinforced and it makes you think that way, um, you, you, when, once you realize that, you kind of not desensitized by it anymore and the spell actually stands out way more than the word controls you right because i see it as putting it there every time we say it we're putting it there like we accept that it's anything other than an illusion that was created by um the dark force well i force i you mean know? whether, whether well, hang on a minute i didn't do it I am the force of dark, and I, well, no, you can't blame me. <laughs> uh, uh, again, you know, if you want to look for the force, if you want somewhere to blame, look no further than the mirror. 
Well, I know. I'm saying my collective, my my collective as well. I contributed to the collective ego fucked upness out there as well. That's why I'm stepping in when it returns on my path and saying, okay, how can I put the light on this darkness? I'm not going to walk away from this guy. He's on my path day after day. It's meant to be. What am I supposed to do? So when I ask like that, I get answers. When you when you ask, you get answers. So I was I was shown the path to how to to how to actually jump out of the system. That was one of my first things of really, you know, red pilling it, jumping out of the system, the matrix, and just saying, you know what, I'm going to manifest a, a property owner who's going to have a, such a, a huge set that he's going to allow me to build a 100 square foot shack for this guy, and put a heater in it and an outhouse, and I don't care if it's illegal, it's lawful because he's a living being and we're just going to do it. And I'm going to manifest the guy, and that's how I'm going to know it's the right guy. Because I'm not going to knock on doors. I'm going to make sure I'm not interfering. This guy might, might I, I don't interfere if he's supposed to expire tomorrow on the bench. Maybe, maybe he's done and he's out of here. I don't want to interfere. So that's what I did. I asked the divine, show me, show me the landowner in high real estate downtown Ganges, Salt Spring Island, B.C., Canada, to uh, put him on my path. And he showed up on my path. And his name was even Goodman, Larry Goodman. And I asked them, what are you going to do if they try to uh, say no? They being, you know, whatever you want to call the force, but the force against the intention of good. Um, and he said, well, I'll tell them, you know, where to go. But he said, no, they won't do that. And that's, all, that's what I wanted. And, it, and he ended up living there, retreating there, Lauren did, for 18 months before he was murdered. Another story. Um, and what it did was it restored his dignity besides give him shelter, warmth, and food. He actually used it. He didn't reject it. Uh, he didn't go to the hospital in jail other than one time apparently in that 18 months. And that was told to me by the ambulance driver off the record. So it was a, it was a success, it was effective. I'd like to say it was effective and it could easily be duplicated many times over. It's just that we the people have to do it. We just have to do it. If I could do it, and pull in all the resources from the community, be them physical or etherical, then we can all do it. No, I, I agree. It's always achievable. But at, at the same time, there are those that don't want that sort of help. And they buck up against... Well, yeah, but we're, but we're not talking about going back and sitting on the fence and finding a reason why not to because yeah it's an individual thing this guy was on my path when people say to me oh how do you uh well whatever comes on your path is your opportunity to stand in the light of truth and virtues let's reach for the virtues instead of resorting to the re to the vices you know each thing that comes on our i call it my 20-foot radius if it lands in my 20-foot radius um i'll take it on because it's it's a lesson or it's a you know, it's an opportunity that I don't quite recognize, or it's a slap upside the head that I really don't want, but I guess I got to take it. Twenty foot radius. If it happens, then I'm gonna I'm gonna try and do. I'm not even gonna try. I'm going to I'm going to intend uh, to land there. No, I'm totally with you there. Don't go and look for it. If it crosses your path or joins your path then that's the time to become part of it and to do something. It's when you go looking because for it's a, it. Becomes, well, that would be the ego. Well, that well, would be no, the, yeah, that well, would be Trace, the ego. Trace, we have to do one at a time. When we talk over, it'll clip on the audio and the listeners can't hear us. So. Yeah? Yeah, sorry. <sighs> nice, big, deep breaths. A lot of passion. When, Love hearing when, it. A lot of passion. When Come on, boss. When we're at the festivals and we're using radio, we say over when we've finished. <laughs> you could try that if you like, over. <laughs> well, you know what I blame it. Oh, you know what I blame it on is I'm a bit. Oh, I have. I'm quick and I'm passionate. I don't. I feel like I'm. I don't really interrupt. That I'm. I feel like you've already finished saying what you're saying, and I'm ready to go. Like come back, but it's it's just too quick. I, it does come across like I'm just blurting out, but uh, I don't it's, mean to. It's, it's all right because because it, 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 it's not you next. So if you and we'll pass it around the room, and then you won't kind of get that. Whoa, you get a, a few minutes because I do get what you're saying. Um, it can get quite intense. Your grounding can come out, and you start rushing. It's plenty of time. It's plenty of time. It's dark. Okay. We can, we can run as long as we want. Uh, <laughs> Viv, 
Bav, Bav Knights, is it Bav Knights, I do believe? Boulevard? Yeah. Bav, Bav, um, I'm going to sit back for like a little bit and just kind of take everything in first. Oh, that's and cool, then, man. That's cool. And well, then like, I'll bring in my like rage-inducing opinions. So <laughs> go on with yeah. your bad selves. Uh, you need to mute off with Trace, because when three of us are talking yeah. and you laugh over us, then... It, 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 nobody can hear what's being said at all. So yeah, the bad. I got, part, I got it. I got it. The bad part about that is, of course, um, we don't get all that excitement. Um, that that's that's there, but ho- hopefully, um, then that comes soon. Hopefully, it comes soon. So we've also been by, joined by uh, Richard. Uh, Richard, hello there. Hello there, Richard. What's up? Oh. <laughs> I, I hopefully the sky and the clouds and no chemicals. Oh, oh, hopefully that's what's up. Uh, but it's a bit dark at the moment. But it's all going good, man. It's all going good. Um, Excellent. Had a, few, had a few dramas today, but you know we're good at dramas. So yeah, welcome. Anyway, man, welcome. Uh, Croft. Thank you. Croft uh, has just joined us as well. As well. Hey guys. Could you turn your player off for us, Prof? I can hear myself coming back to you, mate. Certainly. Can't do. He's a second. Cheers, man. Brilliant accent. Is that better? Oh, that's better. Great stuff, man. Love the accent. Whereabouts are you uh, you're from, man? Tell everybody. I can, uh, see, I can see your little flag, but they can't. Originally, I'm from Sunny Leith, just in the east coast of Edinburgh. Excellent. Excellent, man. So, yeah, real northerner. A real northerner. Yeah. Too true, mate. Too true. I've been in touch with a guy, Craig Houston. Uh, I believe you're maybe going to get him on the night. Um, I've been trying to get this thing sorted out for ages. And I've, I've, I've figured out that there's only two ways we're controlled, is by food and oil. And I've got a system now that's going to feed people and put communities back in touch with themselves and you're going to put food-making machines inside communities. I like um, it. Tell me more. Well, it's basically putting geodesic domes inside communities. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm in the process, of try, well, I was trying to get a grant before, but then now I'm thinking it's, no, it's not going to be worthwhile getting a grant because they people are inside your system. And mm-hmm. I'm trying to get my local community to actually build these domes which produce fish, vegetables and fruit inside the heart of the community so it takes away the whole system of having to go to the shops for food. I'm totally and absolutely with you, Croft. But I'm still getting feedback through your microphone when I'm speaking, so you need to mute it for me when you're not talking, mate, or, or headset on, or speakers down, or... I'll, my, put, a headset. I'll put a headset on, mate. Brilliant, because I want to talk to you more on this. We've got another person. Uh, no, no, not person. Yeah, That's the wrong word. Go on. Nope. Um, we have someone else on the call with us uh, who is actually working with, a, a, I think it is a geodesic de- de- dome. Um, yeah. The five, six-sided ones, the five-sided ones. And he's currently um, setting up uh, aquaponics inside that yeah. dome. Of course. I, I've worked myself quite intensely with aquaponics. Yeah. Hence the name Bob's Backyard. Uh, which is I like that. I've seen some of your videos, I think. you got some stuff on YouTube. Uh, yes, that's right. Ah, under, yeah. I them. Under Bob's Backyard and also under Hydroponics for Life. Number four. So number four. Yeah. Yep. Um, and that was to be implemented out through the national curriculum. Um, but no, of course... That's, of that course was what I, I was trying to do. I'm, I'm trying I'm try to get them in schools as well because there's no point in teaching kids letters and numbers when they can't eat. Yeah, the, 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 the issue, yeah, you know, it is a cross-curriculum activity, so the funding is available. It needs to be placed into modules. The modules were actually written for um, up at Growtech in Rochdale. Yep. Um, all this was to be given away for free. When it became a business, I stepped out of it. Um, yeah. The Bell Siphon design, um, which works, uh, regardless yeah. of the for, volume. For the drain. Uh, for the flood and drain, but the actual design of, of creating a heady of the flow of the water inside the tube I um, you, yeah. works, uh, regardless of the volume pressure, yeah. 
Yeah, but you, you're creating a heady. Um, basically, the water drops vertically and then horizontally in the tube, which seals it much more yeah. efficiently. Much more efficiently. You get, you get a wee hole in the tube as well, which lets the air back in as well, which... At the bottom. Um, yeah. yeah, it puts the oxygen yeah. in the water supply. No, it breaks the siphon. The hole is to break the siphon. Otherwise, oh, it's right. run. I get you. Yeah, yeah. It's scary. A lot of the old American design uses a tube, which is a great design, but it gets blocked. It's only a matter of time. Uh, yeah. Say that they don't, but I have, I've used many of these designs. So the internal one, uh, with a, a shroud that will turn, actually you can use that as a root cutter, and then all your maintenance is now gone. The problem with the maintenance on the beds is, it's okay if you've got a yeah. small one, but if you get a great big one, <laughs> then it's a lot of work to do. But if you don't have to remove the shroud or the bell siphon to do it, then there is no real work to do. Because you don't want to disturb the bacteria that's there. So it's a brilliant... So you've, you've got to change the, the nitrates into nitrates, which is on right. the surface of the clay pebbles, yeah. That's right. Well, it's inside. The, the, that, the reason you're using a, an ebb and flow technique works better than the rest, yeah. uh, because it actually is creating a, the environment for, the, for the, um, the bacteria that's required, also, yeah. at the same time, creates a, a, the environment for the roots that are required. Um, of course. You want if you had water in there all the time. And you need oxygen as well. That's right. So when, it, it, yeah. and the, when the, the, the water comes out quickly, like a flushing toilet, like the emptying of a system, and then that draws air into the roots and across um, the medium um, for the bacteria to grow on. That's why the, yeah. uh, the volcanic stuff works really well. It works really well. Eventually, each one of them little balls becomes uh, a bacterial time bomb, literally. You can use, yeah. you, can, you can spread them out, about. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, the geodistic dome I haven't used, that mine was to, to prove uh, irrefutably that this system would work outdoors in the UK uh, without any maintenance. So, uh, the, the thing I've found is... Once, um, Ruff, you stay on the line with us, mate. We've got lots well, of... Dark City Radio, we just, I just want to put it round, and I, I don't really want to be doing this much talking, but you've really, you've got me on my topic there, Croft, you really have. Yeah, uh, I like that, mate. one of them. Uh, but uh, Richard um, wanted to jump in. Go on, Richard. Hey there. Uh, I was just wondering what the, we were talking about, someone answered. Uh, aquaponics. Uh, aquaponics is... Um, it, it takes the word comes from aquaculture and hydroponic, so they're taking the aqua from aquaculture and the ponic from hydroponics. Right, right. Now, aquaculture's fish farming, um, and you're right to point out, Richard, because sometimes we forget when we get into these things that many people wouldn't even know what aquaponics is. So my, my apologies. Um, so what you've got is with aquaculture, you, 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 basically it creates a lot of waste. Fish farming. Um, is it quite a heavy pollutant in some areas? You can even see it from satellite. Um, yeah. So, uh, the, the algae and stuff builds up because you're you're contaminating the natural environment. Yeah. Well, no. Well, the algae builds up because that, now you jumped a bit there. You're jumping a little bit. That's because of heavy heavy nitrate fertilisers that are used uh, within hydroponics. Hydroponics, you need to to flush out the systems, and the heavy nitrates have to go somewhere. Um, they have ended up, um, but not so much through hydroponics use. Let's be honest about this. This is because of intensive farming use. Uh, yeah. They've ended up in the water. Monoculture. And they've ended up in the water tables and blooming effects of spirulina has happened in North America, Canada, and so forth. Um, yeah. In off lakes and so forth. So, what, what you're actually doing is you, you, you're putting the, the two things together, uh, which is what I actually call, and I don't know if it's the correct term, but I call it a closed loop system. That's right. You're, you're capturing nature in a bubble. You, you're mimicking it. Yes, that's when I, when yeah. I actually looked at it. That's what I did. I mimicked the River Ganges, but, it, but my little my little environment floods perfectly, and, 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 and you know as many times a day as I choose. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, so that's what it comes from. That's what aquaponics is. So what you've got is now you've got fish at one end creating the nutrients. Excuse me. Fish at one end creating the, the nutrients, which go through a, a bacterial filter, which actually converts the, uh, excuse me, the ammonia, the fish poo, basically. Yeah. It goes the crap a, that the fish don't want gives the plants the, the food that they need. Yeah, it goes through a bacterial filter. You've got to have a bacterial filter. Uh, yeah. and, and that bacterial filter converts 
the um, ammonias uh, into uh, nitrate and nitrite. That's right. Nitrite you need to change the chemical composition of the water by, by maybe red worms or something like that. Um, and the, the, the bacteria that builds up on the clay pebbles and the substrate that you use for the, for the roots of the plants, would you change the structure of the water, am I correct? The, the bacteria are called Spira Samoa and Spira Gyra, I think. And the yeah. Samoa and Samoa, well, I'm sure you're digging into my, my memory now. Uh, yeah. um, but the, the mist. They misquoted in many of the books in, in the UK. They were dis they were correctly identified in the United States of America, and they're the second ones, which are Spirobacter. Uh, yeah, I think they are. And is it Spir Yes, I think the first one comes first. I, I, anyway, I get a bit confused, but check it out uh, because they have got it wrong in the UK, and that was one of the first things we hit up against when we went, "Oh no, that's not right in the book." What do you mean? <laughs> we're from education. Everything in the yeah. book's right. The it, you know better, yeah. You, you're better dealing with somebody from the church. At least you can get a decent argument, and uh, not with, with what education or schooling has become. Obviously, it's not education. So, yeah, yeah basically, what it does is um, the, it's only waste that comes out of a, a full working system. Uh, mine's a, a working model, uh, but yeah. our full working system is uh, fish bone and blood meal, which is an organic fertilizer. I'm not going to get down the green issue there with the vegetarians. Okay, fish bone and blood meal has been used for thousands of years, um, um, and there's no been no major side effects to I know of it. Um, but there you go. It's an organic fertilizer. Um, you can end up with worm casting, um, which again, even this with the green great food for plants. Yeah. Uh, well, no, they'd argue that we're actually working the worms, and that's not quite right. We shouldn't actually put the worms to work. Um, I create a beautiful environment for my worms and they're fed daily. Thank you very much indeed. My, my slave worms are <laughs> the best slept slave worms. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, um, we've got, so that's that. You've got worm castings, which are a byproduct. You've got blood, uh, blood, blown, blood, blood, bone, blood and bone meal, which comes from the carcasses of fish. Um, and that's it. That's the only byproducts, uh, I do believe. Um, you do get a little bit of silt building up in the systems, but of course you would add that to the, the worm castings and, and then you would have high-grade, very high-grade soil. Um, the yeah. You pay a fortune for it, your local garden centre, worm casting. So yeah, it, it does actually work uh, as closely as I think you can with the environment. Uh, it can be used for heavy production, which I don't agree with. If we use, in an ornamental setting, the the conditions that are used in the states for tilapia uh, in the UK you get prosecuted um, you get what sorry you would be prosecuted why um, because you're keeping the fish in two camp conditions it needs to be a certain <laughs> amount um, and he's, who's, who's going to prosecute you for that uh, I don't know, there was a lady there was a lady walking <laughs> around with a, this is UK mate this is Nazi Britain okay you, yeah, get, you get prosecuted for growing a perfectly harmless plant you all do that cures cancer. You know, yeah, I mean, I know exactly. You know, I, I don't have from that. that. My, my well, whole take on the whole, the whole sorry. Give a tag, an electronic tag, she's 60 years of age, for selling a goldfish for someone underage. Yeah. Hmm. So well, my whole point on this whole conversation was, um, is the fact that we, we don't have any means of feeding ourselves. If anything goes wrong, then there's nothing anybody can do. Everybody's going to fight for something everybody else has got. And if we can manage to put food production inside communities again and then get the communities back to being normal and actually talk to ourselves, and then obviously when they're grounded and instead of having nylon and rubber soles and stuff on, you know, connected to the ground, and you get everybody back talking normal, then you can start talking about other kinds of plants that were supposed to benefit us in the first place. But it's not until you put everybody in that environment and, if, and folk didn't like going outside, especially in Scotland, people didn't like going outside to actually have to dig the ground and stuff. But if you give them the apparatus mm -hmm. to go and get things moving, then they can go in a closed structure, which is peaceful. It's basically nature in a bubble. And then they can go back to how things are supposed to be. And then that one thing, that, out of the two things that they control us by is food and oil. The one thing that's been taken over by ourselves so if they cut off the supply of oil, then at least you've got to supply of food. You know what I mean? 
I, 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 I've followed this. Um, I wouldn't. I would have a supply of oil as well. I, I have a supply of oil. That's no issue. Yeah. The system can be used to provide you with, yeah, everything right across the curriculum yeah. uh, without any doubt. But it's um, not until you put people in that environment that you will get them to actually see that there is other stuff that can be done, and you're not. You can't talk to many people because it's like try to throw a pail of water over somebody, try to wake them up. And the reason they didn't want to be woken up is because they're too too far gone. And you, you've got to give them a nudge. And the nudge is getting them back to the earth, getting them back to the ground, getting them the apparatus and the tools mm -hmm. to do it easily, simply, and more efficiently than, than they would have to go and do it themselves anyway. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the thing about the, the aquaponics idea, man, I mean, it, it is presented as a viable alternative in industry as well as, as being a brilliant thing for individuals yeah. to get on. Um, it really is. I mean, it's another, to me, it's another hemp. It really is. It, 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 well, they don't want us to know it. about they, they don't want us to know about it, and they don't want this information to get out there. You're right. Um, yeah. Because it does actually make sweeping change in communities. I, I, I don't actually subscribe any longer um, to individual units like, like the one I've built. Um, I mean, yeah. it's not a working principle. It wouldn't provide enough food for people. It's not efficient, and um, it's a working principle. Uh, however, um, I, I have no, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the land now belongs to us. It always has belonged to us, and we've, it's been stolen through intellectual theft. So the only way you can actually take back that land is through physical action. Um, yeah. and in, in, well, that's in, only way you can take anything in this world. Um, yeah, um, um, no, I disagree with that. Um, um, <laughs> I disagree with that. There are many ways to do it, um, but... The way we were successful, let me put it that way, the way we were successful was to have physical action, and that physical action was to cultivate the land. Uh, yeah. And then we put, um, we made the fruit and vegetables free to the community, uh, the plants, what were there, you know, the fruit trees, everything, it's free to the community, and that we, we, we declared that they were now in possession. That yeah. the trees and the, and the fruit and that this... They were in possession, they belong to the community. So they, if they want to negotiate, they have to negotiate through the community or through the trees, <laughs> if you like. Because it I didn't everybody. actually say that, you have to talk to the trees. No, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not tripped out. Um, yeah, that, that's the scenario. And they're completely perplexed. This has yeah. worked. Yeah. Um, it has worked. Now, I, I, it'd be great now to get the Earthship built on there, to get a, a school of, uh, 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 or an educational centre for for excellence in aquaponics, there isn't any. Um, even their system, within farming agriculture, and you want to finish your degree, it has to be part of it. There's no way for them to go and learn it. And they're not yeah. going to pay grants out, again, to corporates to carry on that system. And we all know what will happen. They'll start using an or totally organic. Now, this is the only way you can currently grow hydroponically. Hydroponics, because that's what it is. Aquaponics yeah. is hydro It's the only way you can do it organically. There is no... Uh, 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 other way to do it. You've just got yeah. to, if it isn't done this way, it isn't organic. So don't let them tell you anything because it, it isn't. I mean, at, at the same time, I mean, as long as you you have a water table inside the dome, then the, obviously the soil retains heat inside the dome as well. So if you, as long as you've got a heat source that that, that consumes heat for the sun, then you're going to have a, a longer growing season because you're going to have a warmer environment. Even if you want to grow in aquaponics. Your mind's outdoors. You do realise that, and it grows all year round in Manchester. Say that again. Mine's outdoors. Is it? It grows all year round in yeah. Manchester. The only thing that runs it is one pump. Well, that's right. I mean, you, you, it's just like running an aquarium in your house. But it's outside. You a, a, water, a water pump and an air pump is all you need to run an aquarium at anything, but it's inside or outside. You don't need an air pump. Well, you're probably better off because it produces oxygen, which is beneficial to everything. Uh, it is, but it's not required. Again, it gets over-engineered. I mean, if you use the fall of water, um, which is a far better way of oxygenating it, than, than actually yeah. taking uh, a chemical piece of equipment and forcing air down a tube. I mean, yeah. the fall of water. Like I say, the idea is, is to try and mimic nature itself. Nature, the best, that's right. Well, the best form of waterfalls. I, I, I just can't imagine, and I know exactly what you're talking about. I mean, uh, the, the thing in the future is, is no uh, horticulture, uh, monoculture environments, because that's why all the all the lands are sponge now. It's, it's not, there's nothing, there's no principle to it. 
everything's everything's bogged down and and have to be emphasised by other outside means. And if you can put these domes everywhere that's going to feed people, and it's, it's a horticultural environment in the domes, and you have maybe chickens and bees flying about outside the domes, and you can get people to go back to the land and then back to the community and everybody help each other, and we can bring out these 2,000 all different kinds of carrot, 2,000 all different kinds of tomato, or whatever else there might be going on, and there's all these different kinds of vegetables that nobody even knows about because they're not aesthetically pleasing for the mass populace. Yeah, just, you, as a, you, just, you, as a, just as a side note here, completely off topic, um, Alex Jones, right, if you're using somebody else's ID, I've told you, you failed your interview, okay, you're not coming on that City, alright, you're not coming on, that's it, you know, or you're already, you, he's already tried to get on once or twice before Craig, we've told him, you know, he's not coming on, he has to do an interview, like everybody else, or he's not coming on, and, and he, he, you know, he failed his interview, and that's, that's it, you don't get on this. Come back Is that you're saying Alex Jones? Yeah, Alex, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you what do you what do you make of Alex? Oh, I don't okay. make anything of him. Alex is all right, he's preaching to a choir and we've told him you know, our, our choir doesn't need to hear him. You know, it's as simple as that. You know, he, is that he's is that right. how you try to come on there? Just just yeah, well, he has tried on a couple of occasions, you know, we we tend to drop him as soon as we you know, he has to go through the same as everybody else. You can't come in under a fake ID. You know, we're not having it. We're just not doing it. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not right. We've His platform like, must be big it, enough. It. His platform must be big enough. It doesn't have to come in each calls like this, surely. Uh, excuse me? You, I'm you sure yes. His platform must be big enough. It doesn't have to come in wee calls like this about wee daft scenarios. You obviously don't know what the, the concept of Dark City Radio is. <laughs> Uh, you obviously haven't been listening that long. Um, uh, I've listened a bit well, mate, eh? Yeah, right. Well, well, the thing is, um, many of these people, including Alex, they want to be able to speak their truth openly. Just the same as you. Of course. Of course they do. And where can they do it? Just here. Where, he, you know, in all fairness, Alex now is singing to the rich elite. And we know who they listen to. They don't listen to us. The rich elite yeah. listen to the rich elite. They listen to the rich elite. Of course they do. The rich elite tell the rich elite. And the reason there's so many gay people now is because it's a chemical warfare operation. I have the government document. Yeah, see? <laughs> <laughs> we can't, we can't. It's simple as that. You see, we, we, you see the thing is, we're, we're alive. We're live as well. Uh, yeah, so that happens. We don't. I like to say about Alex Jones, he's 75% marketing, 25% information. I, I think he's singing to his choir. Craig, he's singing to his choir, and you know what he is actually singing. He does a bloody good job. I mean, to be honest, it perplexes me why you haven't picked up Rick Simpson's story. It's like, why wouldn't you pick up that story? You know, I mean, it's, why was that one plant? And I can't answer it. I can't. Answer why was that one it, plant free the whole world before, but never had any disease, any poverty, or nothing like that? But suddenly it's gone. Everybody's in turmoil. You know what I mean? That one plant, that whole hemp revolution that should have came about before was stopped by big industry and never all toy on. I'm sure the reason hemp initially got banned in America had something to do with the cotton trade at the time, so it was more or less like an economic thing. Is cause, like, it was the day with Randolph J. Hearst and DuPont and stuff like that. They were they're all, uh, they had redwood forests to sell. And they, Who they was the president it, that was a hemp farmer, or had a hemp farm at least? There was one. Yeah, it was one I made a quote saying they sow the hemp seed everywhere. It was illegal I, not to grow it at one point in the States. They all had to grow it. Everyone had to grow it if you had a farm. It was illegal. No, no. You, used to pay, you used to pay your taxes with it because it was a commodity, because it was the, the only thing you could rely on. Because you couldn't rely on the money under, system. They need to keep it underground and under control the same way that they need to keep the oil supply underground and under control because if you... Because it's, it's one of the two things that they control us by, well, food and well, oil. Well, if, if you find free energy and you find, uh, well, everybody knows what you can do with hemp, there's, it's probably easier to say what you can't do with hemp, but... <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't think that's possible to say that, what you can do with hemp, because I think it does everything. And that's, that's I mean, the reason I mean, why. Like it's, it. well, I didn't, I, they can produce silk sweat and all now. They can produce silk sweat. So if, so if you want to wipe your ass with silk, just get hemp silk. 
Well, we'll very fair point, Mill. You know what I mean? It, there's nothing you can't do with it, and it's, that's why they know it's that's why they know it's that important. It is up. pretty phenomenal when you look at it. What can be done? Uh, but let's let's throw it around if we can. Um, yeah. Night. I'm gonna, can we call it night? Night. Am I can I call you that? Because I'm not going to try and say blow blah the night. Praise the Lord, everybody. Listen, I just got out the shower. Uh, I just put on my shorts. That's it. I ain't got no shirt on, but yeah, I know you can't see it anyway. But listen, I was hungry when I woke up. So I took me a quick shower when I got in here and I made me a uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Peanut butter. Oh, my God. This jelly. Oh, hey! Right. Thank you very much indeed. I'm not quite sure what that was. Uh, I know that kind of benefits towards the conversation. <laughs> but apparently the man likes peanut butter and jelly. You never know what you're going to get. You never know what you're going to get, do you, on the dark city? <laughs> you know. Right. Peanut butter was good. <laughs> Excuse me, I need to call <laughs> You know, guys, I went to get a grant uh, a wee while back, and I got refused the grant because they said I was helping too many people. And they said, they said, um, they said, you're helping too many people. Can you reapply? And I was like, well, I don't know how many people I'm supposed to be helping in a social enterprise. I thought I was supposed to help everybody. It doesn't seem that uh, that's what everybody wants. Got to agree. I've got to agree, man. I had a bit of a, a crash with when I realised that the basic necessities were no longer the responsibility of the government to provide for the people. Of course. Uh, I was like, what? I think, well, what's the purpose of them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did they actually do? Yeah. Uh, well, they stop you for having all these things that... Make you happy and free. Uh, well, again, this, I've heard it many times that the affirmation of, of, of someone asking for freedom, a um, bit of noise coming off you there, Cross. Um, uh, some, the affirmation of someone asking for cr uh, of freedom is the affirmation of a slave. Um, only a slave asks for free, uh, only a slave demands their rights. Um, so they've definitely got us running around acting like. like like slaves, whether we truly are or not, uh, it remains to be seen. We definitely are manipulated, and there's no doubt about that. I, well, I can't speak for everyone, excuse me. I was definitely manipulated. Um, yeah. You know, I was. Um, and when we kind of started this, or not started it, but with, um, well, with, with what I consider to be a, a sheer work of, of, of genius. Um, I do, and the fact that we can actually do these things nowadays, we can actually come together and take something which is uh, sad, broken, destructive, lost, tired, it's just name but a few of the words we can attach to these depressive things, and we can enter that field of depression with our heads held up high, and we can do something about it. You know what you need to do though, you need to simplify everything for everybody, and say look, because they only supply us with two things, food and oil, you need to tell them how easy it is to cut out the middleman and get everything for the ground, because everything comes for the ground. And I think it was Charles Manson that said on a phone call for the jail that uh, all you have to do is put in 10% and you still get 90% 90, 90 back, because mm -hmm. nature does the rest. Oh, in modern-day techniques, you get over 400% back. Oh, you, you get more back. Yeah. I mean, if, <laughs> yeah. there's a, if there's yeah. 100 people in a society and everybody's putting in 1%, everybody gets 99% back. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a good return, but yeah. you need the society to do it. And you're not going to get the society to do it unless you give them the dynamic and the, the, and the, the apparatus to move it forward. And you bring them back to being a community again. Because, I mean, but, but the dispersion of uh, other nations into this land... We don't know our neighbours anymore. We don't know who to talk to. We don't know who's living a couple of, couple of doors down because we, we didn't converse with them now. And it's not their fault that they're in our country. And what we need to do is bring them back to say, well, can, can we just all get together anyway and just start producing this stuff and bring it all back to a community level? And then once you give them an the apparatus, and when you give them, you give them the system to do it, then it's, it's going to move exponentially. It's going to, it's going to grow like God knows what. 
And I think that's where we're going to fight the problem because th now they're going to see that we can break free and that's where they're going to come and get us. Well, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't actually see anybody coming to get us. Go ahead. Well, you were talking, you were sort of touching on there the, like, the meaning of words. And uh, the last couple of days, somebody's broke down the actual meaning uh, of government and where it comes from. Now, funnily yeah. enough, it comes from Make Latin. Yeah. And it's... Mute all for his cross. Let, let Craig finish. We can Go hear in. you. Yeah, it's all right, man. You get used to it. Go on, Craig. So, the, the word arrives from, like, two words, govern and meant. And basically, in Latin, it means, um, govern means to control, and meant means mind. I mean, you can go and check it out. You'll find it's actually spot on. So, since the creation of government, <clears throat> they've known from day dot, you were talking about being manipulated and stuff, and that's exactly what government is there for. <laughs> um, government, uh, mind control, that's, what the, that's the actual Latin meaning of government. Yeah, well, I'm right on with that, man. I don't have, uh, like I say, it comes a bit of a, a bit of a crash to me that the, <laughs> like I say, Croft, if you can mute your microphone, then we won't hear you farting and coughing and and, and, and scratching your bits stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm right with you, Craig. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any issue with that. I would totally agree that that anyone that thinks someone else is more in authority than them is giving over the control of their mind to someone else. Totally agree with you, man. And it's like, uh, a lot of people don't even actually pay attention to the words in front of them. Like, I look, look there are a lot of people that don't have the time to actually, I don't know, take time out of their day to look into what, what's really going on. They're in an occupation. What does an occupation do? It keeps you occupied. <laughs> so with the, the hours that people need to put in to actually slave away to scrape a living nowadays, they've not got any time to go to any protests, take any time out and actually look at all the news that's in the back of the papers and look into things so I think it's important that at least some of us actually take the time out and try and take a step back and look at what the hell's going on for real I, I like the idea of stepping back, I really do man. Uh, Richard? Yeah well I was wondering, uh, I hear a lot of ranting about how uh, government is controlled and all that and what is the alternative Uh, I don't think we've got control through government at the moment. I actually think we've got anarchy, personally. I think that's what we've got now. Really? Uh, I think we've got actually, it's anarchy now. Where we're living is, is anarchy, uh, personally. Hey, can I jump in? Um, just one second, put your number, can I answer that? No, no, put your number in the room, because otherwise we'll all get trampling over one and over again. Um, uh, have we got Jabba next? Is it Jabba? Yes, Jabba. Hi, guys. Uh, the alternative is to get independent, I think, uh, because as long as we, we wait until the, the government changes something, nothing will change. I think the people have to change. The change will not come from governments. The, the change will come from the people themselves. So as long as we, we, we stay linked to the government and take everything what they propose as a solution, uh, we will not, not have any change. Right, I could disagree with that. Trace? Yeah, I absolutely agree. That's exactly what I want to say. It's the divine feminine. It's rising up in us. We do it. That's the force. That's the enforcer of the law, and we are the law. I've gone through this whole Freeman thing for several years, boots on the ground, cuffs in public, and I've worked all out and full circle we are the law our rights are when we state it it's not about documents it's about standing in that light of that truth and therefore when you connect that to you know biologically nature it just makes sense that's the force that is so powerful if we just align with that simple knowing you know it's just, just like the we just look the other way can I just interject with that? I mean, the problem we've got is that nobody's going to get on side with us until we give them the apparatus and the system to get away from the system we've already got ourselves into. Uh, I did. Uh, nobody gave it me and I did. So, yeah. Uh, you, know, was, you know what I mean, though? But until Croft, you, until Croft, you take it on... The room. No, look at the room, Croft. They put a number in the room. They're all, they're all wanting to speak, so... 
I um, apologise for that. It's all right, man. It's, don't worry, you're not used to it. That's fine. No need to apologise, brother. No need to apologise, bro. Um, Jabba? Jabba? Yeah. Uh, I, I just saw again uh, Monsanto in, in the thing, and I, I cross a lot of these this Facebook groups and stuff who expose Monsanto like madness. And of course they are doing uh, wrong things, but like we, we, we just talk about in the chat, we, we need to know who is be behind the corporation. Because if we take the corporation down, they will just be like, also so, some people say, we'll just be anarchy. But as long as we don't know who really ruled the world, we, 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 can, we, we, can, we can fight what we want. I mean, Monsanto, Illuminati, uh, the, all the Freemasonry and all that stuff, that is, that is stuff that is pushed by the real ones in front of us that we can fight something. Uh, and, and therefore we, we need, we need, um, we need to find out who they are. I don't say <laughs> uh, it's nothing wrong with anarchy. The problem is, is chaos. Because anarchy, we only can have if the people are conscious who they really are, what life is really about, what nature is really about. And uh, as long as this will not happen, we can, we can face, uh, we, we can bring down corporations and stuff. The ones who own the corporation, they will stay in place as long as we don't expose them. And that is that is long time history. That is uh, royalty. That is 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 the, the real bloodlines. But that is not names that we can expose through uh, like uh, like to, uh, It's not easy to expose them because it's it's not easy. They they are, they are not never in public. Their their names are traced in the companies and so on. But. As long as we, we fight just Monsanto and the little corporations, I say little corporations because uh, I think they are not that powerful. They are just put in front, like the owners of Monsanto are IG Farben, and this was the pharmaceutics of uh, Hitler to uh, provide uh, the concentration camps. Well said, man. Well said. Uh, Bovard Knights, Bovard Knights. Yeah, I had something to say about something, and I completely farted about it, so move on to somebody else. <laughs> okay, bro. Uh, Craig? I just wanted to uh, touch on what he was talking about, like who the corporations are and who these people are. <laughs> like, um, <clears throat> if you go and look into like the doctrine that every single one of them share and if you go and look into the doctrine that was found in the Illuminati but was sh but is shared like in Masonic circles, Jesuit circles, the full works if they get caught doing what they're doing they disband and reinvent themselves as a new name so what what organisation do you never sort of hear getting you never see them in public, you never see anybody, like, you see the Knights of Malta in public, you see uh, the Jesuits in public, you see Masons in public, but you never see Knights Templar in public, because if you boil it all back, and again, this is what I was talking about earlier on, trying to step back and look at the bigger picture, most of these organisations come from the Knight Templar, and that's, that's the whole trick behind it, they're the man behind the curtain, as far as I can, eh, uh, figure. They're the first ever international bankers. They invented fractional reserve banking, more or less. These are the, that's the secret fractional reserve banking and learning how to treat people like cat, uh, cattle. And the corporations, again, are just like tentacles of the, <laughs> of the Knights Templar octopus. Don't man. beat your desk, Craig. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's alright, man, I was with you. <laughs> um, just getting old nerves out there. Yeah. Um, so the corporations, and even like above the corporations, if you talk about the Masons, you talk about the Jesuits, they're all one of the same. <laughs> they're all just part of all these brotherhood the control grid that falls down from the doctrine the Knights Templar found when they uh, were under the uh, Solomon's Temple. And that's when, they, at that point, that's when they did become uh, more powerful in Europe than the Pope and any king. And that's why they ended up getting burnt at the stake and reinventing themselves as the Masons, as the Jesuits, and all these other organisations over the years. <clears throat> if you trace it back, all the all the doctrine, there are variations, but they all come from <clears throat> um, the Knights Templar and the 
Kabbalah, the, and the information they gained when they were in Jerusalem under the Solomon's Temple. Good just info. wanted to throw yeah, that in about hey, No, no, it's right. I, I've, I've touched on some of it myself. Um, but we've got a queue. Um, we have got a queue. Um, stop the rot. Um, before you go, bro, uh, I haven't got a problem with anarchy. I, I, I think what we've got is anarchy, and what the anarchists are actually presenting is true order. Um, just before you take my head off. Go on, mate. I agree with you, mate. You know, I mean, I, I, I know, I know where you stand on that, pal. That's no drama whatsoever. I, I wasn't uh, questioning your uh, your knowledge of that one bit. Um, I also just wanted to say I agree entirely with what Craig just said. But um, I, the words that are bounced around, the names that are bounced around, the Illuminati and the elite. I, I'm just getting a little bit like sort of pissed off about it to be honest you know the, the, the that's what those that's what those people call themselves we should not call them the illuminated ones we should not call them elite they're not elite they're just fucking criminals <laughs> <laughs> so let's just call them what they are they are criminal banking cartels they are you know the the, the yeah well some people call them globalist barry yeah but they're just criminals, and that's, you know, please, let's not call them Illuminati. You know, that, that's what they call themselves. That's what they consider themselves to be. They consider themselves to be higher and above what we are, and they are not higher and above what we are. They, they, they're just criminals. Well said. Well said. Really well said. Right, where's the list? Uh, Croft. Croft? You know that? Yeah, come yeah, on. Yeah, I am here. Well, I've been, I've been trying. I mean, I'm, I'm a member of the Scottish Sovs and stuff. Um, and what I've, what I figured out is it, Scotland's the key point to all this stuff. I think. I mean, as much as everybody else and every other country's in this same sort of position, the, the Scottish are the ones that fought this system back then. When when they, when they built Hadrian's Wall, the Antonine Wall, the, the the propaganda at the time was that we ate our own children. We were barbarians, and we were we were running about up the glens with our balls bristling with thistles. Excuse the pun. We kilts on. And they said that we were barbarians because they couldn't conquer us because we told them to beat it last time. So that whole thing about conquering the whole world back then was prevalent and, and the Scots turned around and said, no, I didn't, we're not going to buy into that, we didn't like it. So can you just piss off, excuse my French. And then what they've done is they built two walls, the Hadrian's Wall, the Antonine Wall, and that, it wasn't to keep us from stealing what they stole from everybody south of the border or the rest of the world. It was that idea of being free, because the idea of being free is so prevalent and nobody likes to know what the idea of being free is because it scares them and it takes the power of everybody else away. So when they, when they conquered the whole known world, the border was Scotland. Scotland was not on the maps in the Roman times because they were the end of the known, known, the known world. And Scotland's got the hardest fighting force in the world as opposed to morals. We are supposed to be free. That's what everybody knows Scotland is, is to be free. And we, I think we're missing the whole picture of what's supposed to be going on as a, as a nation, as the nation are standing. As much as nations are an illusion and stuff like that, we, we've got the hardest fighting force in the world with the top guys at the SES. We've always been at the forefront of every war. We're the first in every battle. We're the most feared as a nation, as, as, the, as a, a fighting, a fighting uh, opposition. And what scares me is we've got the biggest army that goes in every country and gets accepted in every country with the football. And we go, in, we go in every country and we're welcomed. The Tartan army is welcomed all around the world. And I'm sitting thinking, well, if we've got the Tartan army, what's the point in having the Tartan army just to fight for football? And it means no sense to me when you've got all these people going to these stadiums week after week and we're not talking to them. We're sitting, we're sitting, looking at things the wrong way round, and there's all these people wasting all this energy on a Saturday fighting opposition, when really we've got all the tools we need to t target people, to say to people, what, what, how do we change things and get the Tartan Army involved on, on our level, on the Scottish level, and they'll go and fight a, a, for the football team every, every time they're in a, a championship game or whatever else, and we're getting to the point where we're 
we're no focusing on what we should well, be doing. It's because, it's because when you give slaves a day off, they like to go to the amphitheatre and watch the Christians murder themselves. No, it, it's, it's a way of taking male energy out of, out of, out of society, because male energy is the one that fights for everything, you see? And that's why they do it on the, on the Saturday, because that's supposed to be the day of rest or whatever else is supposed to happen. And that's why everybody's busy on a Saturday. Yeah, we got a better deal. I think we got a better deal under the Roman, you know, in, in, in the UK, you know, the slaves in, who were enslaved, they got a much better deal than we get today off the government. I mean, we really, we really did. Anyway. You know, you know what I was trying to, sorry mate, I'll carry on. Yeah, it's okay man. He said, well get, you get back on and get, be more often Croft. We want to hear you man. We do. Yeah, I mate, like what you're on. saying, but. Um, hey Jabba, carry on pal. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Throw it to Jabba. Get your name back in again quick before anybody else says that. Quick, jump in. Go on Jabba. Yeah, uh, I just want to say somebody uh, mentioned the Knight Templars. Um, it's also not the, them. This is just the army used to to to, to scare the people over uh, centuries. Uh, the, the, I put a link before in it. It is um, it's, it's already a trace of something. It calls the the Palavachi family, and that is that is like the, the royals how, how they how, how they are. Um, how they work and they are really behind and they have just their the, the castle and they, they, they really pull the strings. I, I just, I just say that it, it is, I think personally, I think it is important to know who they are, but definitely, uh, we can call them criminals. Uh, but if, again, if we call them criminals, they, they is also fear based. Uh, I call, I just call them ankle biters, <laughs> making fun of them, take all their power away. That is that is that is all what we have because if it's fear based, we give them power, and uh, to take the power away is simply to 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 not respect what they are doing and not not to be scared of them, and uh, not to fight them. That uh, I think is a very important part also in, in the whole truth story. That does, if we're gonna fight something, we we deal with the same same uh, instruments that they use, and I think the important thing is that. We, we know who we are, that we are not scared about what is going on, because that is all what it is based on. As long as we are, we are scared and, and, uh, afraid of a power system or, uh, of some guys, they are really not, not that much. The problem is that people are so scared of them that they can take control with the very few for, uh, for the many. That is all what. Totally right, man. Absolutely, totally right. I mean, myself, uh, comedy, you know, I, I, I use it a lot. Uh, I'll use it a lot to get right up close to me and then giggle in the face of fear. I love it. I really do. Anyway, um, um, just before we, we move on to the crew, I know, I know Richard, you're next, but we've got Mark Mann on the phone and he can't see what's going on in the room. Um, Mark, he's our, Mark Mann, our man on the tarmac, our man on the street. Uh, where are you, Mark? Hey, I'm here. I'm down in a little place called uh, Flowdurst, and I've just picked up a pal from Heathrow Airport who's coming from... Where is he coming from? He's coming from India. It's called Dharamshala in uh, north of India, up in the Himalayas. What a noise! What a noise! And uh, it's named Diver. Uh, I can't actually hear you right now, but bear with me a sec. I'm going to waffle a little. And we're either's on the sofa, and I'm on a, a chair that should be a rocking chair, but it's not. So. Yeah, we're getting a lot of banging and, and a lot of noise from you there, Mark, but I presume you're sorting that out. That's what you're actually doing. Uh, yeah. Well, cool, man. Cool. Nice to have you with us, bro. Uh, and nice to have your friend from India there. Uh, like I said, there was a bit of uh, clunking and, and, and banging. Uh, it was drowning you out a little, but we got the gist of it. You picked your mate up from the airport, uh, and he's coming from India, yeah? Is that right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. And uh, all the banging stopped now. We just sorted it all out. But uh, his name's Ivor. If you want to ask him a few questions, what he's been doing for the last six weeks, and uh, he'll answer all. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Well, well go on then, uh, Ivor. Go on, just tell us a little bit about it. We have only got about, what, about 20 minutes or so. Um, no, it won't take, won't take me that long, Paul. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, so i just come back. I've been in India for six and a half weeks, <clears throat> my first visit. And, um, you know, everybody said to me that uh, 
whatever you expect to find in India, you will just, uh, you know, it will be there and, and more and more and more. And that's been my experience. It's, uh, it's quite an amazing place. And um, all sorts of strange things go on there. And, uh, you know, you have to be prepared just to uh, accept it, really, and um, just go with the flow. Uh, it is a beautiful place. Um, got problems like we all have, you know, like most places have, but uh, it has to go past the problems. Um, yeah, I've had, a, I've had a long day. I haven't slept for the last 36, 38 hours. I've been on trains and buses and planes, and uh, it's all part of the adventure, isn't it, you know? Um, I'm 66 years old soon, so I'm no spring chicken, but, you know, I've been able to do this, and uh, which is just a really nice thing to do, and um, I recommend it to anybody of any age. Get out there and get them, you know. A friend of mine said to me um, sometime earlier this year, say yes to life. And that's what I've been doing just lately, saying yes to life, you know, and uh, just getting on with it. It's really nice. India is a fascinating country, full of fascinating people, and um, they're all nice. They all like, most of the people like uh, like English people. Um, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just very, very nice. I have to, I've got to, I've got to agree with you completely wholeheartedly. Uh, I just ask you whereabouts in India you you went to? Well, I started off in Cochin, um, and I went to uh, Mysore, I went to Uti, I went to Madurai, Chennai, Kerala. Uh, I spent a little bit of time in Goa on the beach. Then I went to Calcutta, which was uh, quite an experience. Um, I went to Darjeeling. Uh, I went to um, Varanasi, which was a hell of an experience. Um, Shimla, Rishikesh, Dharamsala, uh, and back through Delhi, you know. And um, they say lots of overnight trains, which are fascinating. <laughs> um, I did a 19-hour train journey where I was yeah. adop- adopted by an Indian family, which was absolutely fantastic. They fed me and asked me all sorts of questions, and a whole three generations of them. It was really nice. Yeah, don't really don't eat don't eat the food on the train. Buy your food at the station. I, I've been on the train to Kerala from Goa. Um, well, to be honest with you, I had some I had some good food on the train. Really nice. Uh, right, I'm a vegetarian, right, right. so I didn't I didn't eat any meat at all because I'm a vegetarian, mm-hmm. and I think that helps actually because there's some fantastic veg, uh, veg food in uh, India, especially in South India and Kerala. The food was beautiful. All these coconut curries were fantastic, you know. But, um, yeah, the trains I found were amazing. The buses were a little bit hard work, but, the, uh, you know, all in all, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. I it prefer is. the north. I like the mountains. Yeah, it truly is a beautiful place. There's, there's no doubt about it. I mean, and you're right, there is some hard things to see there. Um, but they are surrounded in beauty. Um, here yeah. we have... We have, we have um, occasionally here um, we, we see some beautiful things and, and surrounded in shite well, absolutely. anyway great to talk to you man and, and well, you, you too, uh, well you're kicking around uh, with our man Mark I hope we're going to hear from you some more man it'd be nice to uh, it would be nice yeah, to yeah, hear yeah he's a, he's a good pal of mine and uh, it was really nice because he, he's actually been looking after my cats while I've been away yes so, we've um, all about the cats so this is fantastic yeah uh, <laughs> uh, one, he, one of them's here now Percy's with us now he has, he, has you, he has presented you with the bill, hasn't he? Yes, he has, yeah. All oh, right. That's yeah. Okay. I, told him, I told him where he can poke it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, I meant, I meant for the damage that they'd done. Oh, maybe, he, maybe he's going to leave that till later. <laughs> he's going to tell me about that later on, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to pass it round the room. Uh, yeah, fantastic. We've got, quite, we've got quite a few other people here. We ain't got a lot of time. Uh, and I know you couldn't see it, um, and that's why you couldn't put a number in, so that's why I've, uh, I've done what I've done. And thanks to the others for being patient there. Uh, Richard? Richard? Yes. Where you go, yes. mate? All right. So, well, I just wanted to mention a few things that uh, Babylon and a few others mentioned about the Freemasons and Templars, if you don't mind. No, uh, seriously. Take it away, mate. It's your radio. Good. Because uh, someone actually said uh, that the Freemasons were linked to the Templars and uh, that most of these groups were actually originating from there. Uh, I was just wondering if there was actual evidence that these groups are historically linked. Oh, I can answer that one, yes. Through the Vatican. Oh. Yes, definitely. Oh, go on, Craig. Go on. Well, I was just going to say, all you, all you need to do, now I'm terrible with numbers, just go and look at the timeline. Um the first Masonic text was in something like 1340, 
1380 or something, I think. The mm-hmm. Knights Templar were burnt at the stake. Friday the 13th was in 1305. 1305 was the same year that William Wallace <clears throat> was hung, drawn and quartered. Uh, funnily enough, at the time, the reason the Knights Templar came, when they get burnt at the stake, they came to Scotland because at the time, William Wallace was fighting the English. The English was under control at the Vatican at the time, and Scotland was one of the few... Uh, well, the, I think it was only one of the two. I've heard uh, Portugal, but I'm sure Scotland. Scotland was one of the only uh, few regions in Europe that wasn't under control of the Vatican. Uh, mm-hmm. So a lot of the Knights Templars actually came to Scotland. After Friday the 13th, they could no longer call themselves the Knights Templar because they were outlawed, and if you ever get, came out and out and... Uh, out in the town and said you were a nice Templar, you could, you'd get burnt at the stake. So they changed. The, they then like sort of a joined the um, a Mason Guild in Scotland. It was just a normal guild that you had lots of guilds at the time. It was just a normal. Yeah, Mason I, guild. I remember hearing about that. Yeah. And then when they joined the Mason Guild, that's when it became the Freemasons, and that's when they started practicing all the Kabbalah and stuff that they. The, the right, secrets right. that they found back in the temple uh, in Solomon's temple. Well, the the, the thing with the actual uh, Templars uh, practicing magic and all that, uh, I think that was pre- pretty much made up by the Vatican because uh, at the time, what happened is that uh, when the the Templars were disbanded, it was mostly because the the King of France actually owed them a lot of money. So yeah. uh, he plotted with uh, the Pope, actually, to have them excommunicated and then uh, executed. Yeah, you're, you're spot on. When, when Friday the 13th happened, um, there, right. was a lot of, there was a lot of rubbish out there put out by the Pope and by the French king at the time. Uh, obviously, to gain popular support for burning these people, some of it was true, some of it wasn't. A lot of homosexuality stuff was said about them, about uh, about magic and stuff. But it depends what you define magic as. When people say, well, to me, to I believe- don't think they were drinking the blood of babies and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Uh, I think it was no, exaggerated. I, I think I think there's definitely an essence to that. If you go and look back at the the roots of paganism, there's always been sac- people sacrificed, especially young. Teenagers and babies don't know so much about babies, whether it goes on just now or not. But look, just look yeah, well, happens. you have to consider though that the Catholic Church was actually very powerful at that time and actually made a lot of that stuff up yeah, uh, when they, they were wrote, they actually, against there. They actually what? wrote the history, didn't they, Richard? And they did, and a lot of what we're looking at has been written by them. So, right, yeah, but it, brilliant points from both of you, absolutely wonderful. Uh, but we have only got like ten minutes, so uh, who have we got? Uh, Craig, uh, Croft, excuse me, Croft. Oh, Barry, Barry, don't drop off. Barry, why does that Barry always drop off when he's in next? Excuse me, go on, Craig, Croft. Well, I, I was thinking a wee while back about how we, how we enlighten everybody else to the drama that we're all facing. I mean, a lot of folk are blind uh, and ignorant. And then I came up with this idea that uh, it was in the Bible that said that... Um, do not place the truth under a lamp, eh, under a bushel. Place it under a lampstand. Now we walk past lampposts every day. Every twenty paces, people take. We walk past a lamppost. So then I was thinking, well, maybe we can get a method of communication going that we don't have any controversy and need debate by talking to other people. All well, today is put the truth up, and then when you put the truth up, you, all you do is you maybe get a, an A4 sticker. An A4 sheet, uh, Avery stickers, and you'll you'll write the truth on an, a, an Avery sticker, and you'll everywhere you walk, you'll stick it on a lamppost. Every every step, every twenty steps you take, you'll put the truth up. Now, eventually, people can not ignore it. They're going to have to see it because it's always lit. It's always lit during the day, and it's always we always walk about in the light anyway, because everywhere everybody walks. Nobody walks about in the dark, otherwise, when they came over, gone. So in the Bible, it's telling you where to place the truth. It says, "Didn't he place it under a bushel because that way it's hidden, and you're supposed to put it under a lampstand." So if we can, if we can get a system to, together that they, they would get a website. Imagine you had a website that would, maybe you had like five levels of truth, and you didn't confuse people. Just give them five topics: the economy and religion or whatever else, and he, and you had. A system where people can walk past a lamppost and see a bit of truth 
and it goes into the subconscious because you're you're altering the matrix, you're altering the the scopey things, because if everybody walks past a bit of truth, they're going to they're going to hear it eventually, and then if we can get a system there, we can get a website where people can just download templates for every stickers, and once they get to know the truth. And then they, they just download, download the, t the PDF file and put it on Avery stickers. And everywhere they walk, they're putting the truth on lampposts. And then everybody knows the truth after that. Because it'll be hard to deny it. Because everybody's sticking it everywhere. It's already begun. Um, it's already begun. We, we, we started the process with that, with the Rick Simpson's knowledge and, you know, what, what we feel needs to get out there. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's... Um, and Lee... Uh, just, we just need a, a website that's going to that's going to give them the apparatus. I mean, people people are, are not going to have a hard time to tell everybody else. We, we need to simplify the whole system. We need to simplify the fact that food comes for the ground to give them the apparatus to go and get it. We need to simplify the fact that other people are only woken up, and we need to simplify how we deliver the truth to them, and for them to deliver it to somebody else. So if we can get a, a website that's set up that they can just download the template and just print it off, and then as soon as, as soon as they walk outside their door, every lamppost that there's no got a bit of truth in it, they need to just, it doesn't matter what the truth says, as long as it's the truth, everybody's going to walk past the lamppost, and then everybody's going to start talking, mm -hmm. because eventually there's not going to be any pubs, all, all the pubs and that are shutting, and that was the centre of the community, that was where the information was dissected and, and figured out, and now they're shutting, they're shutting the pubs down, they're shutting, uh, they're, they're giving you cheap alcohol in, in the, the, the supermarkets so that you go into your house and you sit in, in, inside your own abode and half the people you drink with in the pub, didn't they, they don't go to people's houses to drink. They only meet them in the pub. So if all, half the places I stay, that all the pubs are shutting. And then the reason that is, is because that's a set of the community and they want to dissect the community, they want to dissect the family unit and stuff like that. Definitely, man. Division, divide and conquer. Got to cut you short, bro. But, right, right you have to make it quick. Uh, I think Craig's in there quick. Quick word, Craig. We've got five minutes, bro, and there's two behind you. Hey, Ray, I'll just make this quick. I just wanted to touch on a few things that were touched on uh, a couple of uh, calls back. He was talking about it being the control being fear-based and uh, making fun of them. So I'm going to be shameless and plug my YouTube channel and say, well, if you want to see me people making fun of these people, go to my YouTube channel and you'll see me making fun of them. You'll find me under Kip1883. But anyway, like, and somebody touched on as well, like, do you believe in magic? Just pull a bit of uh, paper money out of your pocket and you've got people <laughs> believing that's worth something. And I think that's just proof positive. It, def it depends what you think of magic is. Do you think it's really pulling out a rabbit out of a hat? Or is it the way that these bankers have manipulated us over years to make us think that this is the way things should be when it shouldn't <laughs> and I'll, I'll leave it short there brilliant Kip, yeah 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 and this podcast will be available soon as well bro so yeah nice one mate, well put really well put um, uh, Jabba yeah I just want to uh, quick answer to, to, to Richard if he's saying that uh, human sacrifice uh, to child abuse and all this does not exist. I think it's... Oh, no, that, that's uh, it, not what I was saying. Yeah, it's, I just, just let me finish this. That. Uh, yeah, but that is almost what you were saying, that they just made up these kind of things. And no, I, I just think said that Catholic yeah, Church let, let, made can up can a I, lot can I just of it. Answer? it is, is, I think it's important to just cut off the um, emotions, because emotions come from the head. And... Uh, to really go into the rabbit hole to see what is really going on. It's not to have more more fear of, of that whole thing, but I think uh, it's important to, to really see what is really going on. And it's the same, like like the law and all that thing, that is magic. Spelling words is magic. And uh, in each language, you have all the words are really turned in a sense that uh, you make magic anytime you speak. Yeah, verbal affirmation, got to agree with that. In, in all fairness to Richard, though, he, he, we were actually making the point is that they were making this up. They were actually making it up historically. Um, and a lot of that, it's difficult to get the evidence. I, I can agree with him there. It, it's a minefield. Um, so anyway, time, time where we are. I, I do believe we've got uh, Trace. Trace? Is it? No? Oops, I'm, I'm here. 
Oh, I thought you were waiting to get in. No, you had to. I kind of, I was bowing out, but here I am. I just want to say I really agree with the uh, face-to-face in the communities, you know, connecting with people and uh, planting the seeds and just rebuilding. I, I love it. That's the vision. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Quick word, Croft. It'll have to be. We've got to get stop the rot on. We've got two minutes. Yeah, mate. Sorry. Um, I think uh, I think we're getting totally confused by the system that, that, that they've focused, well, they gave us the focus to look at. And I think I think if you get the domes, you get the stickers on lampposts, we'll no need to focus on stuff that, that, that they've been doing for centuries. Because the stuff the stuff we're looking at now is their system. And if we focus on the stuff that we want in our system, then it all changes. Love it. Create your own system. Absolutely yeah, love I mean, it. The, the tools are there. You just We've need to put f- food production units inside communities and you need to take away the, the, uh, uh, the need to have the, their system that they've built. Totally. And then, take, and then totally. put the truth on the lamppost that gives everybody a direction, a way to go and a means to do it. Nice one. Direct action, man. Peaceful direct thanks. action. Brilliant. Thanks for the, uh, thanks stop for the, the night, mate. Yeah, well, brilliant, man. Stop the rock. Go on, last word, bro. The uh, opportunity just to say um, uh, we've just relaunched flippingthepyramid.co.uk. Uh, it's got um, uh, a great activity page that's uh, similar to uh, Facebook, but without all the bullshit. Uh, come and have a look at us. Brilliant stuff. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Thank you all for calling in. Uh, this was the Dark City Show. I'm being told I've got 15 seconds, so uh, we'll give you some music and catch us again. Tune in again. If you are out there listening, get in here. Have a go. Doesn't hurt anyone. No one's getting hurt. Not in our little conflicts.